Hi guys, this time on Deep Junk we're going to take a look at a 59 Dodge Coronet. This car was a uh, police car, matchbox, black and white police car. Um, I gotta tell you, I've never really noticed or given that much notice to the old Dodge in Plymouth back in the 50s because by the time I was, well even growing up as a kid, I didn't see too many of them and by the time I was driving these were in junkyards or stashed away in barns and stuff they were already you know off the road not running um, that car shows the the more prevalent car would have been the DeSoto uh, the fire flight I think is the same thing this is it shares the same underpinnings and the DeSoto adventurer would be the next one up it was real sporty I remember seeing those uh, DeSotos around at car shows a lot this car would be with the police, being a police car, I would imagine it had the uh, Red Ram Hemi in it. I think that's like three, I'm gonna say they're all, the old ones, three, three, 325 cubic inch, making around 250, 260 horsepower. And of course he had a standard uh, six cylinder with a three, uh, excuse me, three speed. I did not know that by this time, 57 to 59, that was the fourth generation of Coronet. I can't recall cars before that. I know, you know, through the 60s, but uh, up coming up to uh, 57 through 59, I, I didn't even know there were Coronets. So I learned something new every day. Like I said, this one would have been set up on a fire flight chassis, same uh, DeSoto underpinnings. Some little things that's done on it. Uh, I'll we'll, uh, go through the uh, rest of the car when I come back here. I'll show you a, a few little clips of uh, of it uh, getting done in some of the chassis. Walk through some of the chassis. So I'll... All right, guys. I'll run you through the chassis here real quick. It's nothing special. We've got uh, some basic black enamel on the bottom. I'll uh, have to uh, touch up to the uh, bumpers where the tape was. We've got, for tires, we've got VFGs and Kregers. Um, they were laid in. Uh, the slots where the stack, stock axles would have gone, and they uh, are in there with just a dab of super glue. Uh, once they were uh, dried, then I went over and uh, melded the plastic tabs, the factory plastic tabs, over with a, an iron, and it, uh, it works off just nice. I doubt it would be like five or you know eight year old uh, tough, but it's it's good enough to uh, to roll around on a shelf. Uh, interior still needs detailed yet. It was cleaned, and the red and blue lights on the back deck are gone. Uh, that will be next. And uh, painting this car. This is uh, paint job number three. I guess three times third times the charm the first two I did it in candy red with a white top uh, first paint job I messed up the second one I just wasn't happy with uh, then I saw that that car on the line a teal 59 same just about the same tone it's not quite the same as what was in the picture but I really liked it and uh, I thought yeah that's what I'm gonna do the third so the third time was this teal color uh, to accent the mags. It's got gray interior to go off of it. it I think it looks pretty good. I, I really like it. Like I said, this is how I would build it if it was in my uh, driveway. Uh, just like this. The, uh, the candy red, I don't know. It, it seems like when you're on and you're, everything's going good, I can lay that, that candy, you know, transparent colors really, really good. And then when when you're not, when you're off, it just doesn't seem to work. Alright guys, going to take a little break in the action. I wanted to ask a question of you, and you can answer or not uh, in the comment section. There is no right or wrong answer. This is all opinion based. Uh, but the question is, um, restoration. What's your idea of a restoration, and when is it not feasible. In other words, where do you stop? Um, I spent a 
large portion of my adult life in and around the restoration stuff. Uh, I specialize in first generation e, uh, F body GM products. That's the Firebird and Camaro, 67 to 69, and I know what how critical the restorations are as far as the, those cars. Um, in the 64 scale, am I ruining the value if I get an aftermarket uh, deck for this McLaren? And if I uh, get tires, you know, the wheels from uh, the Redline shop? Or should I be buying, you know, uh, parts cars, McLaren parts cars for, for what they have? This car obviously needs zinc plated again. It's chewed up pretty good over the front wheels. So I just wanted to know what... Uh, what you thought, what restoration is, um, when it becomes, if you're using 3D printed parts, when does it become a customization versus a restoration? Um, and you know, something like this Porsche 928 here, if I had to fix the windscreen in it uh, and drill it apart, uh, I would imagine I've just killed the value a whole bunch. Um, so I try not to think about doing that. But uh, yeah, what what is what's your idea of restoration? How far is too far? Um, can you go too far? If I used, uh, if I bought up other McLarens to put this car together, yeah, am I am I doing the justice or 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 no? Okay, guys, back to your regularly scheduled program. Already, and then you can see it from that clip, the chassis on this car isn't anything you know real special. Um, I lay those axles down in there, uh, and this was a, a good ride height, so I left it alone. Um, I'm not going to build, you know, axle tubes and all that stuff uh, for a car that's going to be, you know, pretty much just rolled around on the shelf uh, and looked at. If it was going to be uh, sold or given to someone, I would put uh, some axle tubes in it. Also, if I was going to lower it, I would put some in. Um, same with uh, the, the screws. I, I have not uh, screwed one together uh, yet because uh, it's not going anywhere. I would do it if it was going to someone's collection. Uh, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, the adhesive holds them together. They're, uh, you know, they'll sit on the shelf and, and do the same thing. If I need to get back in one, I can always drill it, and then the glue will drill right up the top, and I'll be back into it uh, quick. So, the chassis, again, like I said, no screws in there. Uh, it's basic black, gloss black enamel. Uh, nothing to write home about there. All the trim on this car is bare Zamac. I've just gone after with a, uh, a razor and uh, scratched paint off there and then uh, clear coated it. The uh, front end there, focus, maybe, yes, no. Yeah, a little grill detail, some turn signals down in there. Got our tail lights on the back. It's actually reverse lights up here in the right below that uh, fin. Uh, just a a cool car. Something cool to uh, like I said. If, if it was in my driveway, this is exactly how I would build it. And uh, then you take it out and uh, run it for miles and miles and miles and enjoy it. I sure uh, appreciate everyone for stopping by and checking out the Dodge uh, this week. Uh, if you like it, go ahead and uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, please uh, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and then coming up, we've got a couple builds, build-offs or challenges, and you don't want to miss that. Uh, the first one is August 25th, the Sunday. It is Opaws TV and Movie Cars. Uh, so everybody will be building something from their favorite uh, movie or television series.
then the following week, September 1st on a Sunday, uh, I'm sponsoring or kind of, I guess, the lead yo-yo out in front of uh, Shop Truck Challenge. And that is uh, based around just that, shop trucks. What you would use at your shop to haul parts. Uh, if you'd have a custom truck or something as a calling card, that's, that's what it's going to be. So uh, a couple Sundays right in a row there where there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. And again, like I said, thanks for stopping by. Uh, hit the like and, uh, and subscribe if you haven't. And we will see you in the next one.